In our previous lesson, we took a look at implicit differentiation, where y was a function that depended on x. y was not an independent variable. x still controlled what y was. And so we had to use the chain rule in a dy dx. But we can have functions where x and y are independent. In other words, we'll have a function that has x and y in it. And it's equal to x squared y to the fourth plus maybe e to the 2xy minus x natural log of y. Notice here, if I pick a value for x, I still have to pick a separate value for y because they are working together to determine what f of xy is. Another way we could write this is instead of just f of xy, we'll say z equals the equation x squared y to the fourth plus e to the 2xy minus x natural log of y. So sometimes we'll have a third variable, kind of like we had y to represent f of x. We have z to represent f of xy. If x and y are both independent variables, we can take the derivative of either one. When we can take the derivative of either one in either direction, we call those partial derivatives. The partial derivative in the x direction. What that means is we're not going to think about y as a variable. We're going to treat y like a constant. And notationally, what you'll see for the partial derivative in the x direction is an f with a subscript of x. Sometimes you'll see f of xy with a subscript of x on the f. Other times you'll see this kind of cursive delta f over delta x. And when it's not a d like we saw a df dx, but it's the, the delta f with respect to x, that's going to mean the partial derivative in the x direction. Very similarly, we can go in the y direction, and it's almost identical, the partial derivative in the y direction. In that case, we're going to treat the other variable x like a constant. And that's going to give us an f with a subscript of y to represent the partial with respect to y. Sometimes you'll see the xy after it to show what the independent variables are. And again, we can do the partial with respect to y this time, meaning we're going in the y direction. So let's find fx and fy, the two partials of this function we've been talking about. f of xy equals x squared y to the fourth plus e to the 2xy minus x natural log of y. So if we're looking for how fast the function is changing in the x direction, the partial with respect to x, we're going to treat all the y's as if they were a constant. So in our first term, the derivative of x squared is 2x. And y to the fourth, like any constant, just gets tacked on to the end. Plus, the derivative of e to the stuff is e to the stuff. And then we multiply by the derivative of the stuff. If the y is a constant, 2y is a constant, the derivative of x is 1 leaving behind just 2y. Minus the derivative of x is 1, and natural log of y is a constant. We have our partial derivative in the x direction. What's happening in the y direction? Well, going back to our original function, x squared is now the constant, and the y to the fourth is what we're going to take the derivative of. It's 4y to the third with the constant x squared tacked on. Plus e to the stuff is e to the stuff times the derivative of the stuff with respect to y this time. So y is our variable. Its derivative is 1. And 2x, the constant, just gets tagged on to the end. Minus the derivative of x natural log of y with respect to y. The natural log of y, its derivative is 1 over y. And that x, the constant, is just tacked on as a constant. 
If x and y are independent variables, we can take the partial derivatives in either the direction of x or y. Our next video is going to look at how we can do higher ordered partial derivatives.